Hey, 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 Leslie here, and welcome to another episode of Let's See with Leslie Olabisi. We are in the lovely Artful Hotel, Stay Pineapple, in Midtown Manhattan, one of my favorite places. All right, let's get right into it. Today's episode, this episode, is Crime Edition. Let's start with Money Heist on Netflix. Now, I started watching this series when it first came out, and I thought it was very um, interesting and engaging and unique, and I love heist movies. And then somewhere around episode six, seven, I'm not exactly sure, I either feigned interest, uh, lost interest, or some other show got my attention. And before I knew it, three years had passed, I'm on Netflix, and I'm like, there's no way these people are still in the bank and there's no way that I'm watching this if they are. Sure enough, um, I had spoken to several people increasingly over time that said, yeah, it's good. Now you should check it out. And then finally, one more suggestion, uh, Cliff included, uh, said, yeah, you need to watch it. It has twists and turns and it's not what you think. And me, I love a good heist movie, I love a good whodunit, and I love twists and turns. So, I picked up the pieces, got back into it, and a couple episodes in, I was hooked. And I could not stop watching all the way through. Quality programming, I toast thee. I'm all current now, so we have the last season coming. They say... Money Heist, La Casa de Papel en Español, is a Spanish heist crime drama that traces a long-prepared heist led by the professor, one at the Royal Mint of Spain, and I'm not going to spoil alert you and tell you everything, um, told from the perspective of one of the robbers. The narrative is told in a real-time fashion and relies on flashbacks, time jumps, hidden character motivations, and an unre unreliable narrator for complexity. The sixth and final season, billed as Part 5, Volume 2, arrives in December, and I am looking forward to it. So not only is it a good heist movie, is it interesting? Um, do they think of all of these great details? Then uh, one minute you think something's going to happen, and the next, obviously that's the definition of a twist. Uh, it's it's just like the, the boldness, the audacity, the nerve of many of the characters is what kept me engaged. Um, and the cleverness of the professor who's planning everything. And um, it also, you know, it's, it kind of makes me think of Animal Farm. Like it's a analogy or a allegory. I mean, they're not animals, but, you know, it's parallel comparisons to relationships, trust, um, you know, following plans, following instructions, um, what happens when people are hunkered down together for long periods of time uh, without any access to the outside world? Um, how do relationships change in these environments? So there's all of these different character relationships that also gets examined in this show. Moving right along, Gamora on HBO Max. I stumbled across this um, show because the image of the main character looked like another actor that I'm a fan of. And it took me till about the second season to realize that he wasn't going to show up in the show. <laughs> and it was just bad lighting. But either way, this is an Italian gangster series. I've often heard brothers and sisters talk about gangster hood movies and how they're tired of seeing, you know, black stories and, you know, we want to hear something different. And listen, I hear you, but me, I love gangster flicks. I like crime. I like heists. I like all false. I don't like the true crime stuff. Like, I don't want to watch another 48. I don't want to see real crime. But I like the simulated and inspired by stories. So, you know, I like the chess of it all. I like the relationships, the flips, the audacity. And sorry to break it to you, crime is international. So Gamora takes place in Italy. They say... Gamora, La Serie, is an Italian crime drama TV series based on a book of the same name written by Roberto Saviano. 
It tells the story of Chiro Di Marzio, a member of the Camorra Savistano clan headed by Pietro Savistano. Chiro aims to navigate the dangers of the criminal world while also fighting a brutal civil war. This four season saga tracks the battle over the most prized territory in Naples. So basically, it's an Italian BMF or power or fill in the blank of any black gangster drug dealing crew that upsets people so much. Listen, um, I could go on with international crime murder syndicate stories that are out there right now from so many countries and I enjoy all of them. So it's not just us. It's just that our um, TV or um, entertainment watching scope is so narrow that a lot of times we keep our sights set in the U.S. But it's an international entertainment world out there. Sour Patch Kids and Cherry Cola Worthy. Speaking of BMF, I like BMF too, and that's on Stars. Um, this is a story. This is a story many people are familiar with, but I'm not. I heard one line in a rap song, and that's the only way that I even know who the hell B, uh, Big Meech is. So I like hearing about the story. Um, it's been very interesting to watch. Sour Patch Kids and Cherry Cola Worthy. They say brothers Demetrius and Terry Flannery from Detroit become powerful figures in the world of drug trafficking and money laundering. See, we haven't even gotten to the money laundering part. And that's what I like. I like to see how people grow in business. Yeah, cr criminal or not. How do you figure out to, to go from making nickels and dimes to making real money, to making money to support yourself, to making money to support your family, to making money to make investments, and then to make, and then how do you track the money? How do you keep up with the money? How do you clean the money? And how do you do it in a clever way without attracting attention to yourself? Or if you already have attention on you, how do you not get caught? I think all of that is interest, again, interesting. Again, the chess of it all. And not only do I think that the tales of men and how they have to get crafty to outwit their competitors is interesting, but also watching the effects that drugs and the drug game and drug business has on families and on people, communities, all of the interested parties, all of the people that are connected to those in, engaged in that business, it's interesting and it's real. I, my first neighborhood where I grew up, I actually saw, I would see on TV one one image or one story or seeing music videos, one lifestyle, and then in right in front of my eyes, I actually lived in a neighborhood, middle class, suburban neighborhood, where you could see when drugs showed up, you could tell. You could tell when drugs showed up, and then you just saw the effects of it, and then we moved. So I didn't get to, I didn't have to, I was fortunate enough, I didn't see all of it, but it was, it's interesting, not because, uh, not in a fairy tale type of way, but just in a real way that it's not about, uh, how do you say, glamorizing or glorifying. Um, it's that these are just real life stories and, and, and different people live in different parts of the same story. We're all living together in one story, but experiencing our role that we play. How are we connected? Who are we connected through? What are we connected through? By how many degrees of separation? And so um, that's one of the reasons why I like to watch a lot of these crime, criminal, heist, whatever stories, because we are all connected to it. You don't necessarily have to be a part of the crew or a part of the job or, you know, a part of the transition or the laundering or the fencing or, or any of that. There's so many different roles that we all play unwittingly, might I add, and um, and I like it as entertainment. I'm not interested in um, uh, true stories and courtroom and yeah, that's 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 too much. It's too much like snitching at that point. Storytelling uh, with real elements, recreating or being inspired by, yes. 
um, actually watching uh, the first 48 and somebody actually being interrogated and telling on himself? No. So anyways, that wraps up another episode of Let's See with Leslie Olabisi. You tell me, what do you think about the crime stories or the gangster stories or the drug dealing stories or the high stories? Do you see any difference? Uh, do you recognize the international participation and um, uh, entertainment quality of all of them and that they're all out there? Drop your comments in the section below. And if you have not subscribed, do subscribe. All right. See you next time.